Okay, so now you're hitting it farther, but you're still hitting that slice most of the time and the occasional big hook and missing way too many fairways. How can we fix this? Well, it's important for you to understand why your ball flight is off course. In this segment, our PGA professional will provide you with tips and tactics for proper grip and alignment so that you can know their importance in hitting straighter shots, not just off the tee, but anywhere on the course. Here we talked about distance. Now we're going to talk about getting the ball in play. You know, this setup that I have here is not to hang your dry cleaning on. It really is to help illustrate a point about proper setup fundamentals. You know, one of the most important things for golfers is really to be able to get the ball in play off the tee. It's critical to play in this game well. But really what starts behind that is the ability to make a plan or predict an outcome. If you can't do that, there's no way that you can pick a target out there to be able to aim at. And it all goes back to your setup before you ever strike your golf ball. That's why I have this setup here on because I want to be able to show you is that we're looking to try and get some parallel lines to our target line. So I want to be able to see if I can get my feet, knees, hips, and shoulders parallel to where I want my ball to go. This gives us the best opportunity to make a repeatable, consistent swing, whether it's on the tee or in the fairway. Now, in terms of your setup, here's some of the things that you have to consider. So when I'm taking my setup, I have three bends to my posture. The first bend is I'm going to bend from my hip joints. I'm going to push my hips back behind my heels. That allows me to bend forward and get my sternum pointed towards the ball. Allows my arms to hang freely in front of me. What I want then is I want these, these lines parallel to my target line. When I, my second bend is a flex of the knee for balance, support, and stability, and the weight's going to be distributed on the arch of my foot. Now, when I take my setup here, my last bend is a tilt of the spine because my right hand, or right-handed player, is lower on the golf club. So I have to tilt my spine to accommodate the right hand getting on the golf club. Here's the mistake that most players make. They never get that third, that never get that third tilt. And what they do is they swing their hand over the top, and now the shoulder gets to be in this kind of open condition here. Here's what happens next. That ball location is not right for this shoulder setup. So what I have to do then is get my ball really forward in my stance. And now my arms are going to follow the path of my shoulders. So now I'm going to swing across that line, hitting either a big pull or a wicked slice. Neither one of those two is predictable or had any orientation to the target line I was trying to hit my ball on. Now, it may bleed into where my target is, but it had no relationship to my target line. The other aspect that we have is players that hook their ball get too much tilted this way with their shoulders, not matching their hips. That means now the ball location's back in the stance, and the ball is going to go too far out to the right. That also doesn't have a relationship to where I'm going to be hitting my golf ball. So taking your setup, do everything you can to work towards getting yourself nice and square and parallel with your lines. It gives you the best opportunity to improve at this game and put this ball in play in the target area creating a plan. When you can create a plan and predict an outcome, you can get really good at this game. Now you know the secret for keeping it in the fairway. Setup fundamentals are the key. There are three important body bends in setup. Bend forward at the hips. Flex your knees. Tilt your spine away from the target. Square your body to the target line. One of the keys to good course strategy is knowing exactly how your ball spins. As far as I'm concerned, people either tend to favor slice in their golf swing or they tend to favor hook. But what you need to know firsthand is how does a golf ball react to the face of the club. So I'm going to show you how the ball reacts to the face of the club, and then I'm going to show you how the path of your swing into the ball would dictate how you set up to play a golf hole. First thing you need to understand is what makes a golf ball go straight is the amount of backspin that's created at impact. When you look at an iron, an iron will make contact underneath the equator. As a result, the ball will then react to the loft of the club and more backspin will be generated than side spin. Which is, if you think about it, most of you will say that you hit your short irons better than your longer ones. Now when you look at a, a driver, when a driver is on, uh, on, the, on the golf ball, the driver makes contact at the equator. So if your club face has any degree of openness or close to it, your ball is going to generate more side spin. So the key to hitting good straight shots is making sure 
the club face is nice and square on the ball at impact. So, as I said earlier, you're either going to favor hook in your swing or you're either going to favor slice. So if you have the tendency to make a golf swing that approaches the ball on too steep of an angle, the club head is swinging down and across the ball, your natural tendency then would be to open the face. So if I'm a slicer and I got this hole here in front of me where I got a whole bunch of trouble here on the right with water and trees and whatnot, I look over to the left side of the hole here and see wide open fairway. So I'm going to go ahead and tee off over here on the right hand side of the tee box. I'm not going to try to alter my swing. I'm just going to go ahead and create that natural swing across. Start it to the left and watch it slice back into play. The worst it's going to do is if it doesn't slice, it'd still be on the left hand side of the fairway. Now if you have a golf swing though, where the club comes down on too shallow or too narrow of approach into the ball, then you're going to favor a hook because the club's coming too far behind your hands, the face wants to turn over, so as the face turns over, you're going to create hook spin. So if I'm going to favor a hook in my game here, I'm going to aim up the right side here, just inside the water line here, and I'm going to play for my draw. That way, I'm still working the ball back into the middle of the fairway. And then, if you're not real sure, you're not real confident that you're going to correctly curve the ball, then just remember, tee off with a club with more loft, like a 3 or a 5 would. So what I would do here, whether my tendency here is to hit a hook or to hit a fade, I'm going to just aim right down the middle of this fairway here and then just let my natural curve put my golf ball into play for me. So just remember, you either hook the ball or you slice it. If you slice it, tee off on the right hand side. If you hook it, tee off on the left hand side. But just remember, the loft of the club is your best friend to put backspin on the ball to keep it in play. Use your natural ball flight to decide where to tee it up. Determine if your natural ball flight is a fade or a draw. Higher lofted clubs result in more backspin and straighter shots. Slicers, tee on the right side of the tee box. Hookers, tee on the left side.